word of the day is dialogue. So dialogue is when characters speak in a story. We put it in quotation marks, and that way the reader knows who's talking. So I have had some creative writers make the mistake that they won't put a quotation mark at the beginning and at the end of what they say, just like in this example right here. Um, so make sure that's the reader's cue. This is where this character is starting to speak. Here's where they're finished speaking. So that's the most basic things. Most kids who get to my class, they can at least do that. But there's a lot of other information. And this project is a lot of points. So make sure you're paying close attention here. So there's a couple of rules of dialogue. Um, we're going to look at this little example over here. So the first rule... Obviously, always, always, always put the character's words, what they're saying out loud, put that in quotation marks. If it's not something they're saying out loud, it doesn't have to go in quotation marks. The second rule is punctuation that goes with the character's words always goes inside the quotation marks. You'll see a lot of kids, like on this example, a lot of kids will put that period or that, that question mark, they'll put it outside of the quotation mark. That's incorrect. It goes inside the quotation mark. So here's a good example. Quote, capital letter, I wish I could dab as well as Mrs. Coates, period, inside that ending quotation mark. Um, so let's come check here next. So the second rule is dialogue tags. You have to use them so the reader knows who's saying what. So let's look back here. Um, the tag, the dialogue tag, is just who's saying it. Just because it's obvious to you, the writer, who's saying it, does not mean that it's clear to the reader. So always use it. It might be something like said, blah, 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 but you can also put a lot of personality there, right? Shouted whoever, or Bob quietly whispered, right? It doesn't always need to be said. But this dialogue tag is really, really helpful for the reader. So you can have it come wherever you want it. It could come at the beginning. It could come smack dab in the middle of the dialogue. It could come in at the end. But uh, the, the quote, the dialogue, and the tag need to stay together. Think of them, they're dating. We don't want to split them up. They, they want to stay together. So don't put them on separate lines unless, like... Google Docs is trying to force you to. Those need to stay together. But here's a exactly correct formatted example. Quote, a capital letter. I wish I could dab as well as Mrs. Coates. Comma. We're going to talk about that in a second. Inside the quotation mark. Lowercase s here. Because the sentence already started right there. The sentence isn't done until this dialogue tag is, is finished. So this is a lowercase s. The only reason it would be a capital is if the tag, the dialogue tag, came before the quotation mark. So lowercase s said every student ever. And notice how that is sticking with the dialogue. Okay. The next rule is you're going to separate dialogue and taglines with a comma. Really important. I know tons of adults who don't even do this. So we are, this is our signal to the reader. Hey, reader. I'm not done with the sentence yet. So unless it actually is the end of the whole sentence, you're going to be separating the dialogue and the dialogue tag with commas. So on this example, this dialogue tag came right in the middle, which is great. So we've got quote, capital letter. It's the beginning of the sentence. You know what? Comma, because the sentence isn't over yet. End quote, because this is the end of this character talking out loud for right now. Lowercase s, because this quote already started over here, said Obama. I'm putting another comma, because I'm telling the reader, hey, reader, I'm not done yet. Quote, now this I would not need to be capitalized, except it's a proper noun, right? So in this case, it's capital, but if it wasn't a proper noun... My sentence already started over here. This could totally be a lowercase if it wasn't I. I think I need to give Mrs. Coates a, a medal for dabbing so well. Period. Now it's a period. My sentence is actually over. It's inside the quotation mark. Okay, let me come check back on here. Make sure we're not missing anything. All right, so we separate dialogue and taglines with a comma. The commas, that is a really common mistake. The commas do replace periods if the sentence isn't over. Lots of kids will put a period here 
and not a comma. Don't make that mistake. That's a really big one. Okay. And then the next one is it doesn't matter if you're handwriting or you're typing, but every single time it switches between characters speaking, you're going to start a new line and indent. You'll get a lot of kids who will start a new line like this, but they'll forget to indent. So if you're typing, you just press the tab key. A lot of times, though, pay attention. A lot of times Microsoft Word will automatically indent for you. But you're going to start a new line and end it every single time it switches between characters talking. Even, like, let's say that, like, this character only said one word. Doesn't matter. You still start a new line and you end it. So this is a perfectly formatted example. So let's look at some of the little details here because you're going to be doing this yourself. So we've got the beginning of the story. So we would always end it once upon a time. Former President Obama and Mrs. Coates walked into Albion together. Now... Dialogue is about to happen. So this is where I start, start a new line. I have new line indent, capital letter, because it's the beginning of my sentence. Mrs. Coates asked, comma, because I separate the tag and the dialogue with a comma, quote. Now, this is a weird situation. This one is capitalized because I, I want you to think of dialogue as a sentence within a sentence. So because this is the beginning of the dialogue sentence, this is capitalized. Capital D. Do you ever dab? Question mark inside the quotation mark. And in that case, it's not a comma, right? Because this is the end of my sentence. So I can just do the ending punctuation there. Now another character is about to, sp to speak. So I start a new line. Indent. Quote. Capital S. Sometimes. Comma. Because the sentence isn't over. Quote lowercase s because my sentence already started over here and it's not the beginning of the dialogue said obama comma because i'm not done yet quote now this could not be a capital letter if it wasn't i i dab when michelle his wife isn't looking now a period because now the sentence is over and that period is inside the quotation mark and last piece so we're starting a new a uh, piece of dialogue so it's a new line so enter tab quote capital letter let's see what you've got then this is a special circumstance also see how there's kind of double punctuation here that's okay it um it should never be a period if the dialogue tag is after like this but if you if it's important that it's a exclamation mark or a question mark then it could replace the comma. But I cannot tell you how many times I've seen kids, they'll do a comma and an exclamation point, or they'll do a comma and a question mark. That's completely incorrect. In this situation, it replaces the comma. Quote, now remember, this normally would stay on the same line. It's just in this little box, it made me separate the dialogue tag and the, the dialogue. But normally those two things stay together. They stay on the same line, right? Because they're dating. But in this case, it made me, it made it go down onto the next line. Lowercase c, because the sentence already started over there. Challenge Mrs. Coates, and now the sentence is over. So that's a lot. That's a lot to have to practice. But the good news is none of that is particularly, particularly tough. It just takes a lot of practice. But again, think of dialogue as a little sentence within a larger sentence, right? Um, and a couple extra tiny things here, because... Being able to do all these rules of dialogue, that's just one part of it. But being able to make your dialogue believable. So I'm going to tell you a story of Mrs. Coates' failing. So back when I had a, a creative writing class of my own, I had this story. I was so excited to go turn in. My teacher uh, graded it and gave it back. And she said, I loved your story, but your eight-year-old sounds like an 80-year-old man. And I was like, oh, snap. I, I didn't think about making my dialogue believable. I needed somebody to tell me it's your job as the creative writer to make it seem natural. Because what we're doing as creative writers, we're making something totally fake seem like it's real. And that takes practice. It's easy to get better at, but most people aren't naturally good at that. So there's a couple of little tricks. Most people are pretty informal when they speak. Like if I came into class and said, good day, fair students, how art thou this fine Monday? That would be weird. That's way too formal. Most people are pretty informal. And most people, unless you're a teacher, you, you speak in really short bursts. So you shouldn't be having a bunch of lengthy speeches unless it's on purpose. 
Then a big one, huge to make it believable. Each character should sound a little bit different. I'm not talking about accent here. I'm talking about things like the words they use. Maybe you have a character who says like all the time, or they say um or uh a lot, or maybe they stutter a little bit, or maybe you've got like an old man who does speak a little bit more formally because he comes from a little bit different time. Maybe you've got a little kid who uh, is really informal. Maybe you have somebody who's a character who lives in Texas, or maybe you have a character who lives in Canada. Those, that Texan and that Canadian are going to use slightly different words, right? So each character, you should ask yourself, if I took away the dialogue tag, if I didn't have that, and I just read the dialogue, does it sound like it all comes from the same character? And for a lot of 6th, 7th, and 8th graders, that's a big problem. That's a big piece of feedback I give a lot of like, if I, did, if I took away all your tags, this sounds like it could all be the exact same character. So we want slight differences. Their personality should affect how they talk. Are they lazy? Are they excitable? Are they really funny? Are they kind of weird? Are they a little bit dumb? Are they really smart, right? All of those little personality things should affect how they talk. So it's a lot to think about with, with dialogue. But really and truly, I know, like, I would guess probably 70% of the adults that I know can't do these skills. So if you can leave my class with these skills, you are doing better than a lot of adults. So there we go. Dialogue.